Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing a book review on Arabella and the Battle of Venus by David D. Levine. If you guys don't know, this is the second book in the series, and the first one is called Arabella of Mars, which I did a book review for, and I'll leave that linked if you want to check it out. But if you guys don't know, in this world there is atmosphere in space, so people are able to travel from one planet to another by using these different currents in the atmosphere and on flying ships like this one, if you can see it on the cover. Arabella is a very headstrong girl who in the first book was raised on Mars, and her mother thinks that that is not a good thing for her anymore and she needs to learn how to be a lady and ships her back to Earth. And once there she finds out that there's a plot against her family and she tries to get back to Mars to save her family from some awful fate. In this book, it continues her story, but obviously it has something to do with Venus. As usual, my book reviews, I'm gonna give you my pros, give you my cons, give you my rating, and be done. My first pro for this book is that Arabella continues to be very true to herself. In the first book, she doesn't allow society to fundamentally change who she is. She stays the exact same. She stays that person who puts her family first and puts the people that she loves first, no matter if her actions are considered proper or not. She has her own goals and she is working towards her own goals. She just wants the style of life that she wants, basically. And she continues to have that mindset in this book, which I really appreciated. People try to tell her not to do certain things, and although maybe she should have listened to them, she makes her own decisions after weighing the, pr the pros and the cons, and she accepts the consequences for her actions, but she does them anyway because that's her being honest with herself and she's listening to her own conscience. Another thing that I really liked about this book was that you really get to explore a little bit more about the Venusian? Venusian? I don't know how to pronounce what people would be called if they lived on Venus. Whatever. Their cultures were really interesting and I liked that they all weren't one big culture. They had different nuances from different classes of Venusians. <laughs> Venusians? I don't know. I thought the language was pretty interesting and I really liked that certain people really made an effort to distinguish between these different groups of the native people of Venus and learn their ways and learn how they think about society and everything like that. I, I really like David D. Levine's cultures that he sets up for the different worlds. One of my biggest pros for the first book was the Martian culture. I wish that he had gone into the Martian culture a little bit more because I thought that there was a lot there that could be explored and fleshed out and I think the same thing with this book. I really liked the cultures that he set up for this world, but then he didn't really go into them as much, but I still really enjoyed what we got. One thing that was really interesting about this book was that it points out that although people can be open in certain ways, it does not mean that they are open in all ways. People in this book are more open to the Martian culture than they are to the native people of Venus's culture. The people of Venus are considered barbaric almost and are looked down upon. They're basically treated like, I don't want to say slaves because they have a little bit more independence than that, but they are not treated very well. Although those people come from a place of I'm accepting because I accept Martian culture and I am more tolerant of Martian culture But it doesn't apply to Venus and that's how people are in real life and this book points out how not okay That is to be okay with this group of people, but not that group of people It doesn't make any sense because you know, we're all people and you have to respect differences between people It's what makes people as great as they are is that we are different and we come from different cultures and different backgrounds And I like that this book really pokes that out and really brings it to the surface. Some people are very hypocritical about stuff like that. I really like learning about the French and how they went about colonizing within this solar system. Everyone is trying to race to these different planets to take over them and, and to use their resources as their own, and each side is viewed as evil from the other was pretty interesting because it's similar to how they did it on Earth. So there was basically some really interesting world building and some cultural social commentary in this book, which I really liked. The last pro that I'm gonna talk about for this book, because I don't want this to be extremely long, is that this book was written under some extreme circumstances for the author. It was a really hard time in his life, and I am just astounded that he was able to write this novel while going through everything with what he was going through with his personal life. So really, I just was astounded that he was able to to pull this off and I also absolutely love the ending of this book. It was so much fun. Was, I'm looking forward to where the series goes in the future. Now I'm going to talk about some of my cons. For me personally I think that love triangles are something that's very hard to do properly and there is a love triangle in this book and I didn't love it so that was a big detraction for this novel for me because it does focus in on that love triangle a lot and Arabella being torn between two different men. It just is not one of those things that I love reading about and I don't think that it was done in a way that really kept me engaged and really kept me guessing, oh, where, who, where is she gonna end up? Who is she gonna end up with? I just didn't really care. <laughs> so I didn't care for the love triangle. I kind of mentioned this a little bit before, but I really wish that there
there was some more information on Mars and the Martian culture and what was happening in the after effects of what happened of the first book. I hope in the future of the series that we get more information about the different worlds and what happens with the natives from those worlds after these battles happen between these different groups of Earth people. So it's a little bit of a con that we didn't get any more information on Mars, but it wasn't that big of a con. I'm hoping that we get some more information in later books. And my last con for this was that I just found it to be less compelling than the first book in the series. It took me over a month to read this and I found that this book was pretty easy for me to put down. I didn't actually have to finish a chapter or anything like that. I easily just put it down and I would forget about it, <laughs> I guess, honestly, until I saw my bookmark sticking out of the top and I realized that I should continue reading. So it just wasn't as compelling and I didn't love it as much as the first one. So overall, I really did enjoy this book. There were some really cool, interesting things that were happening, but I just didn't find it as gripping as the first book, so I ended up giving this book three stars. So that's going to be my review of Arabella and the Battle of Venus by David D. Levine. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this series. Have you read the first book? You know how to pronounce the word of what people from Venus would be called because I have no idea. <laughs> Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.